I'm sure we've all been there where we stumbled across a cool looking product or article within our social feed, but hesitate to click it because we just aren't sure where that link will lead, if it has potential tracking, or if it's just a virus. That's why I started using URL check because when I tap on a link, it brings up a new menu to let me swiftly scan it for any viruses, remove any referrals or useless parameters, unshorten it if needed, and more. It even lets you open any dynamic links with the appropriate apps, saving you from constantly being redirected to the browser. And the best part is that it's completely free and open source. It's just not on the Play Store, it's on F-Droid. In fact, none of the 20 apps in this video are found on the Play Store. They're either found on third-party app stores or other websites, but they're still extremely useful, open source, safe to use, and completely free to download with no ads. So give your boy a thumbs up because finding these apps wasn't easy. Also, make sure to stick to the end because I've got a fantastic app that brings all these together. Moving on, Canade is a great way to extract the APKs of any of your installed apps and save them locally on your storage. That way you can easily share them with your friends or transfer them to another device. It even works with system apps. And no, it doesn't require root, nor do you need the Shizuku app. It just needs the storage permission to work, and once you tap an app, it'll get extracted. Wallpaper Export also lets you extract things, but instead of APKs, it lets you extract your current background. It's convenient when someone asks you where you got your wallpaper from and you don't remember because you downloaded it a long time ago. Or it's also useful when you want to share any stock wallpapers that came with your phone. Speaking of wallpapers, we just released these new Shape Edition walls to liven up your home screen. They're really fun, colorful, and we even made some for all your foldable phones. Plus, you can pick them up alongside the rest of our previously released widgets and wallpapers only on our Patreon link down below. If your battery drains way too fast, even with the screen turned off, I recommend you download Force Doze because this will forcefully enable a feature called Android Doze right after you turn off the screen. If you're unfamiliar with Doze, it's basically a behind-the-scenes feature on Android that stops most of your apps and services from running while your screen is locked. That way, your phone doesn't die as quickly whenever you don't use it. The only problem is that it takes around 30 minutes while the phone is stationary to finally get enabled. And if you pick it up and move it around, the timer will reset. However, with Force Doze, your device can enter this deep sleep mode right after you lock it without any timer. It even disables the motion sensors so that this mode stays active no matter how much you move your device. It's a pretty fantastic way to extend your standby time by a lot. If you have a system app that you can't uninstall or disable, you can use Hail to forcefully remove it. As a matter of fact, it gives you multiple ways to remove an app. First, it lets you freeze them, which means they're put on pause and can't run in the background until you unpause them. Similar to how the extreme battery saver mode on the pixels pause your apps. The second way is to hide them, meaning that they won't show up in your launcher, app drawer, or in the settings. And finally, hell can just disable them, meaning they're gone from your phone and unreachable unless you re-enable them again. It's honestly even a great way to save battery. The only string attached is that you need to install the Shizuku app, or if you're rooted, you can give it super user access. You know how your native gaming mode automatically turns on Do Not Disturb mode whenever you play certain games? Well, with Auto D&D, you can do the same thing, but for any app you choose. For example, I added the YouTube app to this list, so now when I open it, Do Not Disturb mode automatically gets enabled and then turns off when I close it. Works like a charm. The only catch is that it won't run without the Shizuku app as well. This next one does something you probably never knew you needed until you saw it. It's called Camera Folder, and it lets you take a photo from within the Recents File Manager page. You know, the, the page that pops up whenever an app wants to choose a JPEG file. So instead of selecting an old photo, you can take a new one right then and there. It's pretty random, but I'm sure someone out there can find this to be very useful. I've been using Telegram for a while and used many third-party clients, but Xteragram is my new favorite. Even though it may not have as many features as some of the others, it still has some significant advantages. For instance, unlike most other Telegram clients, Xteragram shows you what you're modifying within the settings with neat illustrations. That way you're not left there wondering what you just changed. 
It also provides you with an improved camera system for certain phones so that you can take better quality shots within Telegram. It also lets you change the double tap actions for both incoming and outgoing messages. Add a new secret chat for any of your contacts and have the conversation self-destruct after a set amount of time. There are a lot more features that came from. The only downside is that it's not updated as frequently as the others, but it still gets the job done. When it comes to music recognition, I'm sure most of you are using Shazam or Google Assistant, but a fantastic alternative is Audio. With the type of a button, it can recognize over 80 million songs because it's linked to a service called Odd. And just like Shazam, it saves each song it recognizes so that you can find them easily. And upon recognition, it'll let you search up the songs on any streaming service. It even provides more options than Shazam. And unlike Shazam, it's open source. Now before we dive into the next app, I want to share something valuable, especially if you're a content creator, designer, business owner, or aspiring influencer. This sponsored segment by Porkbun could significantly enhance your connection with your audience and boost engagement effortlessly. Here's the deal. By switching your link in the bio page to a .bio domain, you'll likely experience increased engagement. Why? Because your URL is now a lot shorter, simpler, and easier to remember. In my case, howtoman.bio is much more easier to recall than some lengthy Linktree URL that I used to use. Plus, using a .bio domain centralizes all my links in one place and provides more clarity to my audience about what they can expect from clicking on my bio link. With a random shortened URL, they'll be in the dark and get discouraged to click it. Here's the best part though, you can snag a .bio domain for less than $3 on Porkbun's website. So say goodbye to that cumbersome bio link and opt for a bio domain that's not only shorter and more memorable, but also adds a touch of professionalism. I'll link it at the top of the description. If you've been following the channel recently, you've probably already seen me talk about this next app, but I had to include it because it's still my favorite new browser. It's called Chromite. And I use this browser instead of Chrome because it looks and works the same way, but without all the BS. Like it doesn't have any unnecessary trackers, privacy invasive features, or extra junk that Google packs into Chrome. It's even got a powerful ad blocking engine to stop every ad on every website and gets updated weekly on GitHub. I definitely recommend it. Since we're on the topic of alternatives, Squawker is an excellent alternative to Twitter or X. Sure, the interface isn't that attractive, but it can do most of the same things that Twitter can do without requiring you to log into your account. That's right, if you have a public account on Twitter and you just type your username into this app, all the accounts you follow will get automatically imported so that you can see the same timeline as the one within Twitter, but without any ads, trackers, or promoted content. It's also a good way to follow up on accounts that may have blocked you on the actual Twitter app if their account is also public, but you didn't hear that from me. If you're running Android 14, this next one is for you. With the latest Android version, there are some new battery APIs that finally reveal your phone's battery health and number of charge cycles. But on some phones like the Pixels, you still can't access this information because it's dug underneath the OS. Luckily, you can use a new app called Bat to easily reveal this new battery information. I've discovered that I charged my Pixel 7 Pro over 200 times since I got it. So it's a great way to learn when it's a good time to change your battery. Moving on, I'm sure we've all encountered this horrible message whenever we tried to send a picture, video, or audio file that is way too big to send. What do you do then? An easy solution is to use an app called FFShare because it can quickly compress any of those files to a smaller size, barely losing any quality while still keeping the same dimensions. It even removes those exit tags, which is great for privacy. All you need to do is share any media you like to compress to the FF Share app, and it'll quickly compress it. Picture and audio files are compressed almost instantaneously, but a video will take a bit longer, especially if it's in 4K. Still, it's quicker than running it through a video editor or uploading it to a cloud server to share as a link. Now, if you're trying to share a file to an iPhone, the process can be a little more tricky no matter how small the file is. That's why I use PearDrop, because it makes it really easy to share any file between an Android, PC, Mac, or iPhone. Plus, no one even needs to download anything, because it's a website, PearDrop.net. 
Once both devices are on this page, you can just tap on the link on one of them and then type the code into the other to make a permanent connection. And no matter what file you choose, it'll transfer quickly without any ads or login requirements. And yes, it's still open source. Also, once you permanently connect two devices, they'll always pair up automatically in the future, even if you close or refresh the page, which is pretty nice. I've always been a fan of Google's live wallpapers, but unfortunately, you can only use them if you own a Pixel. And even then, you only get access to the specific walls created for that device. With an app called Wallman though, you can access almost every Pixel Live wallpaper ever released and use it on any Android you own. It's got the doodles from the Pixel 4, even letting you customize the shapes and their placement. The abstract live walls from the Pixel 5, moving flowers from the Pixel 6, the newest mineral walls from the Pixel 8, and even the OG Live Universe walls from the first Pixel device ever released, all available to download for free. Moving on, the battery saver on Android is pretty limited. Sure, some phones like Samsung let you modify a few extra things, but it's still not great. That's why I recommend you check out Saber Tuner to let you expand the possibilities. Before, on the Pixel, it would only disable the always-on display, limit the background activity, lower the refresh rate, and enable the dark theme. But now, with Saber Tuner, I can also disable the animations, enter Doze as soon as the screen is turned off, enable Data Saver, adjust the brightness, and more. Or I can even turn a few things back on, like leaving the always-on display enabled, or using the light theme. It works pretty well, and yes, these new profiles will automatically enable when you tap on the same battery saver tile that you used before. You only need to allow an ADB command to get this app to work. The Pixel Fold has this really useful dock that lets you launch your favorite apps, no matter what screen you're on, and if you want something similar on your non-foldable phone, you can download Smart Dock. I reviewed it a while back, but since then, it's been massively improved and is much more stable. How it works is you tap on the bottom left corner of the screen to pop it up, and then you'll see your most recently used apps to let you switch between them. Or you can even pull up an app drawer. After you're done, you can just unpin it. Plus, you can add other actions like an assistant button, system settings, the clock, and more. It's a pretty handy app, although it could still use a bit more work, to be honest. Another exclusive feature that comes on the Pixels that most of us aren't fond of is the at a glance. Luckily, there are rumors that Google is finally planning to add a toggle within the settings that lets you hide it, but until then, we're stuck with it. So you can use Smart Spacer to enhance it. For example, it lets me keep track of the number of subscribers I have on YouTube, lets me see the current traffic conditions in my area, helps me stay on top of my current cryptocurrencies, notes from Google Keep, any package updates, what I'm currently playing in the background, and a lot more. It's got plenty more plugins to use, including Uber, Yahoo Sports, Samsung Health, Pokemon Go, and even Tasker. Plus, I can even add the at a glance to the lock screen and always on display. The best part is that it doesn't require root, works on any non-pixel phone, and is completely free and open source. Moving on, I've been trying to push myself to walk more, and I found a great app to motivate me. It's called Forest, and just like any other health app, it lets you keep track of your current step count, calories burned, and distance traveled, but it takes it a step further by also showing you how much carbon dioxide you've saved by choosing to walk instead of driving around. And as you continue using this app, it'll show you how many trees you've saved. I still have yet to get one to be honest, but I'm getting there. It's still a great concept that thinks outside the box, the UI looks incredible, and it's a FOSS app, so it has no ads or any of that BS. Finally, since all these apps are not on the Play Store, they're not as easy to update unless you get Obtainium, because it'll instantly notify you when there is an update for any app you download off GitHub, FDroid, APK Mirror, or some other websites. My favorite feature though is that it lets me update them within Obtainium freeing me from the hassle of needing to jump to their different websites. And to track these apps, you just need the URL from where you downloaded them from. It's super seamless and works like a charm. Anyways, click this video right here to see more amazing apps that are not in the Play Store. If you download at least one app from this entire list, just drop a quick thumbs up. It really just helps out the channel and the video. 
Get subscribed for more awesome weekly videos just like this one. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!